What the world needs now is love, sweet love. These words, penned by Hal David and originally sung by Jackie DeShannon in 1965, describe our world's longing for love and understanding and were written against the backdrop of the Vietnam War. 55 years on, and I'm sure we would all wholeheartedly agree with these lyrics. There's a yearning for love in our world today. But I sense that even more than this, people are desperately grasping out for hope. Tragically, this week we saw the number of lives cut short due to Covid exceed 1,000 in Bradford, 100,000 in the UK and 2.1 million around the globe. We cannot comprehend the loss the grief and the despair this has brought upon our world. We live on a broken planet, which has always carried the pain and heartache of broken lives, broken relationships and broken communities. But especially over these past 12 months, we seem to have been surrounded by a blanket of grief. But into this reality, I want to share words of hope, of encouragement and of light. Not to negate the very real experience of pain, but to affirm the words of John chapter 1 verse 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We find ourselves searching in these days searching for assurance, for transformation, searching for hope. In her Call the Midw Midwife memoirs, Jennifer Worth shares some very poignant words, especially applicable to our current situation. She says this, Health is the greatest of God's gift, but we take it for granted. It hangs on a thread as fine as a spider's web and the smallest thing can make it snap, leaving the strongest of us helpless in an instant. And in that instant, hope is our protector and love our panacea. This is just one of the many beautiful, moving quotes that speak of hope and light and joy. I myself find such quotes an inspiration and often share them, but they are merely words if they are not rooted in something. We may say the dawn is coming or there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but what is that dawn and where is that light? I believe that this light and this dawn is not just something that is coming to us, but is something that is with us right now. I believe that God gave us his light and his love through the gift of his son. We find ourselves in this kind of no man's land where celebrations of the birth of Christ are in the past and we are not yet at the remembrance of the death of Christ and the celebration of his resurrection. But right now, in this present moment, on a chilly winter's day, Jesus is alive. And when Jesus is alive, the light shines brightly and hope is not an abstract concept, but a tangible reality. Last Wednesday, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, was interviewed by Dan Walker on BBC Breakfast. He shared his reflections on the pandemic and responded to the question, where do you find hope? Justin said this, I find hope in the fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the central core belief that God came and shared our sorrows. He's in the middle of this mess. He's alongside us. 
he died and conquered death and death no longer has the last word. God has the last word. We are clinging to the hope of a vaccine. We're looking ahead to the hope of children returning to school. We are eagerly hoping we will soon be reunited with friends and family. We have so many hopes in these days, but there is only one that will be everlasting. Only one which will surpass all our greatest desires because there is only one critical moment in which all death and darkness and destruction was defeated. As Justin Welby says, that hope is found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The sense of despair that perhaps you feel today and we seem to feel as a world communally is just an indicator of the sense of despair Jesus' first disciples felt as they looked up on the cross on which he died. Over the previous months and years, Jesus' friends and followers had a growing revelation of who this man was and how he would transform their lives and the lives of their community. Many had given up their security and stability to follow this perceived beacon of hope. And then, before their eyes, he breathed his last breath. Not even signalling a peaceful death, but the most horrific death. That flickering beacon of light was extinguished as he cried, It is finished. Just reflect on that desperation for a moment. Perhaps it resonates with your heart in some way today. But as Jesus cried, it is finished. It in no way meant I'm finished. Instead, it meant that because of his suffering and death, hopeless situations were finished. Desperate days with no light were finished. Sin and sadness with no resolution were finished. It is finished meant it is only just beginning. Because out of the most hopeless, desperate and heartbreaking scene, the most hopeful, promising and heart transforming scene emerged. Out of death came life. Out of darkness came light, out of brokenness came wholeness. Evil could not hold Christ, evil cannot hold us. Death could not hold Christ, death cannot hold us. Extinguished hope could not hold Christ, extinguished hope cannot hold us. Today I do not deny the darkness in the sky. I do not deny the pain in our world. I do not deny the battles in our lives. But more importantly, I also do not deny the light of Christ. I do not deny the eternal healing of the world. I do not deny the victories in our lives. And this light, this healing, these victories are realised not because of optimism or wishful thinking or motivational words. This hope is realised because God gave his beloved world the gift of his son. He gave Jesus to walk this earth, to restore and heal those he encountered and to teach us all to embrace an abundant life. He gave us Jesus to give his life for us upon the cross, in doing so taking on all the weight of our sin so we could be free. But he too gave us Jesus to rise again, to walk out of the tomb still bearing the scars of death, to show us that hope can never be extinguished. 
in this present moment, Jesus is alive. And for that reason alone, we can enjoy the gift of hope. And into the future, we will fully realise the beauty of the hope we cling on to today. It'll be wonderful, won't it, when we can hug our family once more, share a coffee with friends, sing together in church, enjoy being with schoolmates and work colleagues. These are all wonderful hopes to have, but nothing will transform our lives as much as hoping in Christ. As Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Don't believe the lies of the world that all is bleak and all is futile. Believe the truth of the empty cross and the empty tomb. Believe the truth that God so loves all the world that he sent his son so that hope would forever be alive. And I pray today that these words of Stuart Townend will be your story and your solid ground. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. God bless you.